brought to the City of London in June. Tens of thousands of them are expected there to protest against the World Trade Organization, which is meeting in the city. In a worldwide coordinated campaign, activists in Britain are also planning to protest. The British police were unprepared last time because the demonstrators had a new protest tool, the Internet. David Lomax reports. In the car park catacombs underneath a railway station in the middle of London, a thousand people have paid £12 each for a weekend event where they can listen to their kind of music or do nothing in particular. The participants also include activists, anarchists and supporters of a variety of different environmental groups. Hands up, who's a police officer here? I am. This part-time art college lecture, for instance, is from a movement called Reclaim the Streets. He took part in the demonstration against global capitalism in the city of London on June the 18th and is trying to gain support now for another demonstration against capitalism in London tomorrow. Violence is 24 hours a day and it's capital that's doing it 24 hours a day every day, not just one day a year on June 18th. Every single day. This machine is destroying our lives and everyone's lives on the planet. And we're resisting. When Reclaim the Streets ran the last big demonstration against capitalism, its organisation was sophisticated, its planning caught the authorities unaware. Most demonstrators in the city on June the 18th were peaceful. But at several places there was violence, both from a minority of protesters and by the police. After this incident, a woman was taken to hospital with a broken leg. In another, a policeman had spinal injuries. There were 84 arrests and millions of pounds worth of damage. Capital is violent 24 hours a day. People are killed, the environments are destroyed for growth, for competition, for profit. For us, that's violent. A few broken windows in the financial centre of the capital. Let's get realistic. When groups like Reclaim the Streets were planning their June the 18th demonstrations against the images of global capitalism, they found that they had a new weapon, the internet. In the last two years or so, emails and web pages have suddenly become a vital part of a new phenomenon in political protest. And you don't have to look very far to see how fast it's growing all the time. Paul Mobbs does most of his activist work by computer. He says the environmental movement is being revolutionised by the internet. These people often never meet. They're in different countries. Uh, they probably will never ever talk to each other in real life. They communicate via the net and send messages and exchange ideas. And what is the significance? The significance of that is you can not only develop a campaign in your hometown, for example, as you would do traditionally. People who have a similar problem across an area, across a country, or across the whole world, can get together and work in a way they were never able to before. I mean, this is the whole. He's now organising a virtual sit-in. It's not against it's the not law. He's trying to jam here. the WTO's server in Seattle with repeated requests. Now, you're trying to sort of gum up the whole system. It's gumming up the system with more requests than it can handle. Now. It actually is going to take quite a few thousand people to make it work. It, it's not one off. One, this, is, this can't be achieved by one or two people. It needs a consensus of opinion actually around the world to get enough people to do this. But hopefully we'll, we'll get there. The City of London Police told us today that they too have been monitoring the net. It's not apparent from all of the information we've gathered to date that what will happen if anything happens on November the 30th will be in, in, in anywhere like the scale that it was on June the 18th. I, I feel that it will be a much smaller event. But I have to say that our joint operation with the Metropolitan Police, uh, we feel that we are prepared for anything, that we have sufficient resources in place and we're confident about being able to deal with anything that might happen on Tuesday. What do you think yourself of some of these anarchist web pages? Well, I think the internet is almost running away with itself. It's a very personal view, of course, but uh, it's the way forward, it's the way of the future, it's not going to go away. But what and do you think of the specific, what do you think well, of the, the N30 webpage? 
Well, the actual the actual content, I don't think it's my my position to comment on. Um, I don't really want to get involved in, in making comments. No, on have you seen it yourself? So I haven't seen it myself, no. Have you seen the Electro Hippies page? I haven't seen the Electro Hippies page, no. You haven't, haven't seen the N30 page? I haven't seen the N30 page, but others have and do pass the intelligence to me about what's on that page. It doesn't take long to have a look at it. I, I know. It, I know it doesn't. Well, I haven't actually personally seen it, but others are, are viewing it for me. <laughs> Some direct activists, like Nick Jukes and Kala Subhaswamy, will still be using traditional techniques tomorrow. They're planning a piece of street theatre, a mock trial. It's part of their campaign against Shell's role in Nigeria. But they're also hoping to transmit digital pictures from the protest live onto the internet. They've done it before. I was involved in media work um, supporting a team of direct activists who occupied the director of Shell UK, his office. So a number of people got into the, uh, the Shell Mex building um, on the Strand and actually barricaded themselves into the outgoing and the um, incoming directors of, of Shell UK. And from within the, his office in, uh, itself, uh, people actually got um, images of the occupation up on the web. So using um, a digital camera, uh, a laptop and a mobile phone, the images were put up live from within his office onto the internet. And this was in direct support of the mobilisation of people within Nigeria. Nick Jukes admits that at the moment his protest group is small, but says the movement's potential is growing. From the anti-Rose movement to all the genetics actions now, I think uh, more and more people are getting empowered in terms of taking direct action, of realising that uh, the so-called democracy at, at Westminster just um, doesn't serve their needs. And so people are looking more at actually taking control of what they do and taking action themselves and making their own demands on on government, on corporations, and actually build, building an alternative. But so far, few in the movement seem able to agree about what that alternative should be. Even if police predictions are fulfilled tomorrow and demonstrators don't turn out in force, the movement and the technology it's increasingly using are not going to go away. David Lomax reporting there.